to Unlocking Grids to Decarbonize Power Systems Globally with the Global Power Transformation Consortium. I'd like to welcome Fintan Sly, Director of National Grid Electricity System Operator. So hello everyone, uh, you're all very welcome and uh, I'm delighted to see you all here. Uh, my name is Fintan Sly, I am the Executive Director of the Electricity System Operator here in the UK and I also chair the, steering, the CEO steering group of the Global Power System Transformation Consortium. Uh, I'm very pleased to be serving as moderator of the, this event. The good news for you is that you don't have to listen to me for that long, uh, as I will hand you over to a panel of really inspirational leaders to take you through some of the real progress that's been made uh, by the GPST Consortium since its launch only eight months ago at the US uh, Climate Summit. But before I introduce our speakers, I would just want to give a brief overview of the Global Power System Transformation Initiative and what it is. And if you could move on to the first slide, please. So GPST is a new and exciting initiative. It's all about deep collaboration between system operators and leading research institutes globally who share a vision and ambition around decisively tackling climate change through accelerating the decarbonization of power systems at a rapid rate. If you could move to the next slide. Those founding system operators from Denmark, Ireland, Australia, California, Texas, and indeed here in the UK, are all at the leading edge of transforming their power systems in order to deliver net zero electricity globally. And by bringing that experience together with the, some of the leading research institutions globally, we can dramatically accelerate the decarbonization of our power systems. In parallel with this, we're also leveraging all of that experience and capability to facilitate those system operators who are not as far advanced on their decarbonization journey, enabling them to leapfrog some of those technical challenges and much more quickly decarbonize their power systems and move them uh, to be more sustainable. We're obviously having some issues with the slides, but we'll, we'll carry on. As I said, today we're joined by some truly inspirational leaders, and you'll hear from Mark Foley from Airgrid, you'll hear from Elliot Manzer from California ISO, Cynthia Rosley from PLN in Indonesia, and Daniel Westerman from AMO in Australia, who will share with you some of their experience and some of the innovations and cutting edge technology that they're deploying in order to decarbonize their power systems at a really accelerated rate. In addition to that, Cynthia in just a moment We'll also talk to you about some really important work that we're launching around advancing the leadership of women within the power system transformation. And then after Cynthia and uh, the system operator CEOs, we'll hear from Anne Catherine Martin from 50 Hertz, who chairs our research advisory council. And she'll talk about the next frontiers of research that we need to go after in order to get to 100% renewables across our power systems. And then to wrap up, uh, we'll have some remarks from Jonathan Pershing, who's Deputy Special Envoy for Climate at the US Department of State. And then we're really delighted and honored that we're going to have the US Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm, provide some concluding remarks uh, and reflections. So now to kick us off, uh, I'm gonna invite on stage uh, Lee McDonough, who's the Director General for Net Zero Strategy and International at the UK Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. A brilliant job title, Lee. Uh, uh, so if you could please welcome uh, Lee onto the stage. He'll give some short opening remarks on the value of GPST before we dive into the main session. Lee, thank you. Very good, and uh, uh, thank you, Finton, for that uh, introduction. And uh, hello, everybody. I'm very happy uh, to be here today at this important event. 
I'm relatively new uh, in my role, so I've only been in post for about six months, so it's a fantastic opportunity being here at COP uh, to uh, meet you all and engage with you and uh, get to know some of you. So um, please do come up and say hello to me afterwards because uh, I'm still uh, on my learning journey about uh, uh, connecting with people. Um, just before I kick off, um, I'd like to just pass on a message from my Secretary of State. He actually wanted to be here uh, for this event, um, but unfortunately uh, couldn't due to his uh, schedule. But he wanted me to pass on his personal uh, support, actually, for, uh, for this initiative. And, uh, and also the UK government uh, is a strong supporter, as you know, uh, uh, and is a partner uh, for the Global Power System uh, Transformation Consortium. And in April um, of this year, my Secretary of State, uh, Kwasi Kwarteng, uh, he was delighted to launch uh, GPST alongside Secretary Granholm, who uh, is going to be joining us uh, later. And in just a, a few short months, this initiative uh, with key UK and other world leading partners has made tremendous progress. Um, the GPST is playing a critical role in identifying and undertaking key research to decarbonise power systems globally, together with uh, championing system operators and research institutions around the world. And the UK National Grid and uh, Finton, uh, their CEO, uh, who just introduced uh, this session, are leaders within the consortium and are collaborating with many uh, institutions. Imperial College in London is another key uh, leader and they're advancing critical activities to scale up green workforce in the power sector and leaders uh, on the women in power system transformation activities which was referenced uh, and that's funded by US Agency for International uh, Development. And as world uh, leaders in technology innovation and advancing renewable energy markets, the UK sees GPST and its mandates as critical in uniting the very best of business, research, academia, so that we can together fully uh, decarbonise grids. Tackling climate change requires international cooperation. And if we want to successfully achieve cost-efficient grids decarbonisation that works for everyone, just simply we need to work together. And so today, uh, the UK government is also launching the Green Grids Initiative, One Sun, One World, One Grid. This is a leading global coalition bringing together international partners to ensure that clean, efficient power is the most economical, accessible and reliable option for all countries to meet their power needs by 2030. And the UK is absolutely delighted to be able to forge a link between these two important and complementary initiatives. In this way, the Green Grids Initiative and GPST will work together not only to identify and fill knowledge gaps, but to ensure this knowledge is translated into practice. And as a newcomer, as I said earlier, I'm personally really excited about both of these initiatives and how they can work together and the UK looks forward to continued fruitful collaboration on the GPST as we continue to address our collective urgent climate challenges. So I'm really looking forward to hearing from the panellists uh, now and, uh, and the rest of the session. So I hope you enjoy it too. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, uh, Lee. Now I'm very happy to uh, introduce Cynthia Rosley, who is CFO of uh, PLN who's going to talk to us around some of the work around promoting uh, women in leadership in power system transformation, work that we're launching today with the United States Agency for International Development, as Lee had talked about. So with that, I'm going to hand you over to uh, Cynthia. Thank you, thank you, Vinton. Uh, good day, everyone. My name is Cynthia Rusli. I'm, I'm the CFO of PLN, the, the largest electric power utility in Indonesia. And PLN is pleased to be a partner of the GPST and is very excited to be launching and engaging with some new work through the GPST focus on women in power system transformation in partnership and with the funding from the US Agency for International Development. Although women make up half of the workforce potential worldwide, they are typically underrepresented in the power sector roles, such as uh, utility management, planning, policy making, and engineering. So this work is focused 
on building more women leaders within the power sectors to address our urgent climate crisis while also supporting women's economic empowerment. So we have many opportunities that we are scaling up in this coming months. So today we are pleased to announce women focus internship and fellowships at GPST core team and FSO institution beginning in 2022 and development of a university level course package that will include inspiring stories from women leaders in the power sector, gender diversity training courses, and pioneering technical courses on key topics. So these materials will be broadly and freely disseminated to universities around the world. So again, we are pleased to be a partner in the launching of this work, and we look forward to supporting gender diverse power system transformations. So we would like now to share with you all a short video highlighting women leaders in the power sector to further launch this work. Please. I was really lucky in terms of where I went to school and the support I had from my parents. It never occurred to me that I couldn't do something or that I would be judged based on where I was from or the fact that I was female. I think as you start to move through the energy industry, you become more aware of the perceptions other people might have. So there have been points where I've been very conscious of being the only woman in the room, and, or perhaps the people may have judged me differently on that. But you kind of lean into that. You work harder to prove to people what you can do and what you're capable of. in science and good in mathematics and physics. Also in Macedonia, there is no much split between what is for women, what is for men, what is for girls, what is Uh, but Cynthia, thank you so much for those uh, inspiring words. Uh, it was also great to see some of those stories that uh, we were just starting to see uh, on that video. Uh, and just to call out, the first person that you saw talking there was a lady called uh, Roisin Quinn or, or Ro Quinn. She was also the first female head of national control running uh, the control centre and the power system in Great Britain. And her, her story is, is truly inspirational. She was the first female chief engineer of the electricity system operator as well. So uh, truly great story. And, and I know Billy Anna as well there. So unfortunately, uh, due to technical difficulties, we can't show you the rest of the story, the stories that were there. Uh, but more on that and on through GPSD as we move to deliver uh, on that agenda, which is really, really important. I'm now going to hand you over uh, to Mark Foley. Mark is the CEO of Airgrid in Ireland, and Mark's going to talk about some of the really inspiring work that they're doing uh, at Airgrid to transform uh, Ireland's power system and make it uh, much more renewable and uh, sustainable. Mark, I'll hand the floor to you. Great. Afternoon. Can everybody hear me? Good, good to go. Any chances some slides, or am I following in the... How's it looking? Will I wait? Okay, first slide, please, next one. So I thought a lot of people in this room are engineers. I'm an engineer, and a lot of the conversation tends to be around engineering, but actually the real conversation should be about leadership. And as I thought about what I was going to say today, just five slides, so I won't kill you with PowerPoint, I thought of three people. I thought of a young lady who's only 18 years of age and changed the whole discourse of her generation and made heavyweight politicians really uncomfortable. I thought about a 95-year-old man 
who spent his life trying to educate and I think he's finally achieved his goal because the sceptics are few and very far behind, be, be, between. And I thought of a man who has passed away, but the greatest leader of the last hundred years, in my view, whose self-sacrifice and courage changed a whole country's future and brought democracy to South Africa. So I'm going to talk to you about three things. I'm going to talk to you about Ireland's story, I'm going to talk to you about why it's relevant to GPST, and then I'm going to ask, maybe, of some of you in the audience, how you can help us. Next slide, please. Just a reminder, and sorry to be negative, but it does, we do need the wake-up call. I stole this from McKinsey's, didn't put it on the slide, my apologies, if there's anybody in the audience. Atmospheric carbon dioxide bumbled along, bubbled along, between 280 and 300 parts per million for nearly a million years. And look at where it's going now. It was 412 at the last rec record, and it's heading onto another planet. So let's talk about electricity, because electricity is our future in terms of our economy, as a well-being, in terms of our social lives, but electricity is at the front line in terms of the battle against carbon. Next slide, please. So let's talk about Ireland. Small country. I hope everybody of you in the audience has heard of Ireland, northwestern periphery of Europe, small country, five million people, massively punch above our weight. And I want you to think about two things, an open economy where some of the biggest countries, companies in the world are located, but a microcosm for the challenge we have on a global level. And why are we talking about the Irish experience today? Because we can learn what has been done and what has been achieved in Ireland, and it is genuinely transplantable right across the globe in terms of the battle we have against climate change. And I want to focus on four thoughts or four ideas. One is, what was the philosophy of approach in Ireland that has got us to what I call half time for the Americans here in the football game? What have we achieved? Where are we going? And what is the relevance of the Irish experience in an international context? So let's go to the philosophy. And the philosophy sits in two domains, the leadership domain. Without political leadership and without um, leadership from captains of industry, the Irish success story would never have happened. So politicians, and much as they get criticized, over 15 years ago, set an ambition for 40% renewables on the Irish power system by 2020. They did it because they believed it was necessary, helped a bit by European directives, which did set, set a, a sort of a higher order theme. But there was a political will and passion within Ireland back in 2008 when policy was enunciated to say we're going for this. And guess what? The engineers thought they were mad. The scientists thought they were mad. People thought it was going to be too expensive. People thought the technology wouldn't work. And this was all a load of nonsense. The other critical leadership dimension was an ecosystem that grew up in Ireland. 20 years ago, people took a bet on wind farms, long before there was a policy in play, place, and proved the technology would actually work. And that ecosystem built slowly and surely, and it was a combination of both public and private enterprise, and some of the best scientific brains, both in Ireland and people who came to work with us in Ireland. And the proof point is, and the facts are, at the end of 2020, Ireland achieved 43% of all energy from renewable sources, predominantly onshore wind, a small bit of um, solar and a small bit of hydro, but generally speaking, it was a, an onshore wind phenomenon that completely transformed a power system. The other part of the equation was not just the ecosystem of developers, it was this man here who deserves all the credit, Mr. Sly, who led in the air grid organization, Fintan was my predecessor, an attack on the laws of physics and said, we can actually make the power system work with very high levels of renewables, despite the sceptics and indeed a section of the engineering community who said, you can't do that, physics won't allow it. Finton led the effort to say, no, we're taking on the laws of physics, we're going to find solutions and we're going to make it happen. So at half time in the ball game, Ireland's at 43%. And our government, in a new round, I think, of visionary leadership, both at a national and indeed a global level, has set a target of 70% resi by 2030 and is about to increase that to 80%. That means 
you've got to be able to operate at 100%. Now, last January and February, our DRS power system was pretty close to 70% most of the time. So the leadership has been provided by the politicians. The ecosystem, one of the best in the world in terms of onshore wind in Ireland, is ready to go. And as we embrace new technologies, onshore wind of which offshore wind which the UK is a massive leader will transplant that we'll take solar and we'll take we'll take other technologies and our job is to make sure that grid can operate at 100% by 2030 what's next slide please which brings us to GPST what is this thing about um, Fintan introduced it but it's about some of the leaders in the world saying turn the clock back 36 months, and if somebody said it's going to be a global pandemic, you'd say well, it isn't going to happen. And if then you said it happened, how would we fight it? We've seen a level of collaboration in the pharmaceutical scientific community that is beyond anything the, the, the world has ever seen. We can bring that exact same psychology of approach and philosophy into the attack against climate change. GPST is the start of that. Nobody's self-serving. Nobody's going to make money out of it. It's about combining intellectual property, a passion to deliver the result, and to share it. So the countries don't have to face 20 years of getting to 40%. They can do it in 10 years. Maybe they can do it in five years in some other parts of the world if they can leverage the know-how, the intellectual property, which we're committed to ourselves, the six TSOs, and a broad range of research institutions who have come on board and said, yes, we will go open source, and we will share all our learnings, all our technology, and give it to others in the battle against climate change. And maybe when COVID hopefully finally passes, and we're still, I, I know, battling with the tail end of it, the, the, the conversation will be about combining the world's capital and intellectual property resources to kill this thing and, and, and to win the battle, because it's a really tough battle. What's my ask, or what's our ask as, as, as a group? Next slide, please, last slide. Very simple, just imagine this is possible. We didn't think the COVID thing would happen, we didn't think the global response would, would happen, and we, the, the globe has delivered. We can do exactly the same in the fight against climate change, and we can deliver power systems that are operating at 100% renewables. That is achievable. Get behind the concept. If you're influential in terms of funding, I'm not here looking for a billion dollars or anything of that nature, but get behind the advocacy, get into the conversation, and then where you do have research budgets, etc., support what we're doing. Because we're not going to make anything out of this other than our objective is to deliver a better world for the future. I'm 60 years of age, three sons, I have two grandchildren. Every day I come to work, I ask myself, am I, am I making a difference? That's what I want to do for the next number of years. And GPST is providing a world-class collaborative platform that this world hasn't seen before, except the COVID thing. And COVID, I think, is providing the inspiration for that. Thank you very much. Super. Thanks, Mark. I promised you truly inspirational speakers on our panel, and I think uh, Mark has certainly delivered and set the bar. It's my pleasure now to introduce our next speaker, who is Elliot Manzer, who is the CEO of Cal ISO. Uh, and Elliot is going to be joining us virtually. So if I can hand it over to Elliot on screen. Yes. yes. Thank, thank, thank you, Fintan. And, and hello, everyone. everyone. It's an absolutely, absolutely distinct, distinct honor to participate in this important, important event, event and, I, and I wish you all. Great, if you, if you could back, back up, we'll try to get to my first slide. slide. I think we're, we're scrolling, scrolling through, through a little bit. Let's, let's, let's go, go back. back. These, These are not, not my slides, slides. It's, it's possible. possible. A couple, couple previous. previous. There, there we, we go. go. Let's, let's stop, stop there. there. Next, Next one. one. Next one. Okay. okay. Right, right, right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. The, the, the state, state of California, California has been working hard to reduce greenhouse gas emissions for quite some time. In 2018, the state elevated its ambitious goals with updated legislation that called for California to have all of its retail electricity sales carbon free by 2045. For a state of 40 million people in the fifth largest economy in the world, this is a tremendous opportunity and challenge which is one of the reasons I'm so interested and supportive of the vital work the GPST Consortium is doing. Uh, 
California has been working hard to meet its policy goals and was able to meet its interim 2020 target of 33% of its electricity from renewables two years early. In fact, for a brief moment on April 24th, 2021, 94.5% of electricity on the California ISO grid was from renewables. That broke the earlier record of 92.5% set just a month earlier. These were glimpses into the future of very high renewable energy penetration. Overall, in 2020, California produced about 33% of its electricity from renewables, 37% from natural gas, 12.2% from large hydro, and 9.3% from nuclear. Our installed renewable mix as of October 1st, 2021 broke down as follows, about 60% solar, about 30% wind, 5.56% geothermal, 4.7% small hydro, and 3.2% biofuels. We're also adding lithium ion battery storage capacity at unprecedented levels. During the summer of 2020, we had about 250 megawatts of battery storage on our grid. As of October 1st, 2021, we had 1,915 megawatts of storage, and we're on track to have 3,000 megawatts by the end of this year. We're excited to be part of the global energy storage revolution. We're also preparing to integrate significant quantities of additional clean energy resources over the next several years, with as much as 15,000 megawatts by 2026 and over 40,000 megawatts of new clean resources by 2032. The majority of this new generation is based on solar, wind, and storage technologies. As we take on this next phase of rapid renewable energy integration, we need to develop additional transmission capacity to deliver this power to consumers. We also need to coordinate market operations with our many partners across the Western United States who are also striving to achieve ambitious energy policies in a reliable and affordable fashion. And as we transition to the clean grid of the future, we must develop the important technology improvements that make sure a grid designed for a different era is modernized to accommodate all the renewable energy and storage that's coming online. Fortunately, the GPST was formed to identify and solve the most pressing technology challenges confronting the world's system operators. The GPST is invaluable in helping to build the tools, systems, education, and implementation practices needed to support the future electric grid and make sure we have the workforce to manage it. At the CAISO, we're excited to help define the research agenda that will speed the transition to a carbon-free power system where reliability is a given. If we could move to the next slide, please. Thank you. As we're seeing in California, wind, solar, and batteries are the leading new clean energy resources being added to electricity grids around the world. These new resources are based on inverter technology and not the traditional rotating machines that have provided key reliability services to the grid. The rapid expansion of inverter-based resources creates a set of new reliability challenges. These include securing adequate inertia, stable voltage, system protection, black start capability, and the ability to ride through disturbances. Solving these challenges will require advances in technology, tools, operating practices, and training. When we began our collaboration last year with the other founding system operators involved in the GPST, it was immediately clear that we shared common concerns about the challenges created by an ever-increasing quantity of inverter-based resources. As we refined our research agenda and goals, one of the first opportunities that came our way was to support the work of the Unify Consortium. The Unify Consortium brings together an impressive array of research institutions, universities, manufacturers, utilities, and grid operators with the primary goal of designing the clean, reliable power grid of the future. The vision of the Unify Consortium is to achieve future power systems with any mix of machine and inverter-based resources at any scale that are affordable, secure, reliable, clean, and resilient by using grid-forming and grid-following inverters. And their fundamental goal is to enable any level of inverter-based resources and synchronous machines to work together. Control of inverter-based resources provides the opportunity to solve these operational challenges, and the GPST group was more than happy to support the Unify Consortium in its successful bid to receive a U.S. Department of Energy award of $25 million. If we could advance to the next slide, please. 
There are several specific research questions that Unify and GPST will help answer to support the California Independent System Operator and other system operators in managing large quantities of inverter-based resources. How can we ensure inverter-based resources can safely interact with each other in synchronous machines as the grid evolves? What capabilities will inverter-based resources need to ensure clean, reliable, affordable power? What services will future high IVR systems need? How can these be met with grid-forming inverter-based resources? And how will tools and models need to evolve to accurately monitor and predict high IVR grid behavior? We are excited to further engage with the Unified Consortium to shape and leverage this research and to help disseminate it to other system operators around the world in the years ahead. And we look forward to the many more activities that can come from the forward-looking and comprehensive approach being taken by the GPST Consortium to drive industry innovation. In the coming years, we will continue to work closely with the other founding system operators to identify specific tangible research questions, to openly share strategies, expectations, and operational practices and data, and to strengthen the relationships with other countries as we transfer technology and develop new standards for the clean grids of the future. This is exciting and important work, and the California Independent System Operator is pleased to be part of the GPST Consortium and to support the critical efforts of the global community assembled at the COP26 conference in Glasgow. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak with you today, and with that, I will pass it back to Fenton. Thanks again. I certainly have benefited from that. I know all of the GPST consortium has. So now uh, our next speaker is, is Cynthia, who spoke to you earlier around uh, the leadership initiative we were launching to promote women in leadership positions in the global power system transformation. Cynthia is now going to talk to us about the collaboration that's underway to uh, upgrade the control center tools within uh, PLN. So with that, I'm going to hand you over to Cynthia for the second time. Cynthia. Thanks. Thanks again, Finn. Finn. Um, uh, yeah. Can I have my, my slide, slide, please? So I'd like to share this time uh, the interesting collaborations with GPST that we have been doing for a few months uh, already. But before that, uh, let me also give an overview uh, of the context of uh, of PLN and, and the plan that we have around the carbon neutrality by 2060. So PLN is the state-owned electricity provider in Indonesia tasked to provide reliable and affordable electricity for Indonesian archipelago uh, for nearly 280 million people. Our customers currently is about 81.6 million people and by 20 30, we expect that the demand would grow uh, around 50%. So then at the same time, also we are uh, now uh, under the uh, transitions uh, towards the uh, carbon neutrality by 2060. And, uh, you know, uh, around this time, uh, as Indonesia also uh, pledging for 29% uh, conditional and unconditional emissions reductions by 20. Uh, 30. So uh, PLN also along the way with the government policy, we have committed to uh, to this uh, energy transition as well. So we have announced the roadmap to to the to do the carbon neutral by 2060, and we are amongst the first six ASEAN electricity players to commit to net zero aspirations. And uh, you know the whole roadmap uh, basically cons consists of that. We are, uh, you know, having no commitment more anymore. No, no new coal plants awarded after 2020, 2022. Then also we are uh, aspiring to have 23% renewables mix by 2025, exiting coal-based generations gradually uh, by retiring earlier uh, several coal power plants uh, starting 2030. 
2035, uh, and by 2056, uh, we expect that we have no uh, coal-based generations anymore. And of course, uh, with that, uh, all of that, we expect to contribute uh, more than 155 million tons CO2 reductions uh, by the year 2030. So that's probably the, the challenge that we have. And uh, there are several initiatives that we are doing to double the uh, renewable uh, capacity uh, at more than uh, twice as uh, our current capacity, and specifically in solar and wind that will be more than 10 times of current uh, capacity. And so with that, the, with, with those plans, of course, our uh, system operators are at the center of clean energy transitions as Indonesia enhanced its clean energy portfolio, PLN system operators and engineers uh, will be responsible for effectively managing the changing electricity generation mix with a rapid increase in variable renewables resources. So uh, this, this is, of course, must be balanced against quickly changing power demand and customer needs. And we know that the path ahead is full of difficult technical challenges. So as such, we are pleased to be one of the earliest system operators to be partnered with the GPST. Uh, recognizing the GPST as an important platform and resource to guide our efforts to evolve the way we operate our grid system in the face of rapid technological changes. So with that, we are very, very uh, thankful to, to the help from GPST and this is very, very beneficial for us. Well, thank you, Fintan. Um, I actually didn't hear any of your introduction at all. So I'm just going to assume that you said something really nice about me. Um, as you can see, I'm joining you here from Australia. So let me first acknowledge uh, the traditional owners of the land that I'm on, the Wurundjeri people, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. So it is a real pleasure to join you virtually um, to share how the energy transition is unfolding at pace uh, in Australia. It's shaped by the unique characteristics of Australia's power system and how we as Australia's independent system operator are managing the transition in collaboration with industry and governments and benefiting from association with uh, people like the GST. Next slide, please. We go to the next slide, please. And the technology seems to have frozen.
slide that's up is the Australia National Electricity Market NEM slide. Uh, if you want to talk to that. So I can see him blinking on that. So that means that the screen hasn't frozen. Uh, Daniel, can you hear me? It doesn't look like he can hear me. I can, I can only, only just make it out, out if you're talking to me, Finton. Okay. Daniel, if, if you want to just talk to your slide, so the one that's up is the Australia uh, NEM slide, your first slide. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll keep, keep going. going. I, I think you said push on with the first slide, so let me do that. So look, it's helpful to provide a bit of context uh, on Australia's power system. I can't see it, but I'm presuming that the slide with a map um, and Australia's largest grid is shown there. It's the National Electricity Market, or the NEM, uh, with around 60 gigawatts of installed capacity. It's one of the longest continuous electricity networks in the world. It spans from far north Queensland through the main population centres of Brisbane, um, Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, and under the Bass Strait down to Tasmania. It's very long and stringy with around uh, 40,000 kilometres of uh, transmission line in total. And the states that you see there are often very loosely interconnected. The NEM is home to about 23 million people, quite a small population when you consider um, similar geographies like Europe, Asia or North America, as you can see from the diagrams uh, on the screen. And for comparison, the same geographic area in the US would be home to about 150 million people spread across 20 states from New England in the north uh, through to Florida and Louisiana in the south. And this has some pretty obvious implications for the cost of infrastructure, but it also has technical consequences for being able to operate the grid securely, which I'll come back to in a moment. But in a world where the lowest cost electrons come from the sunshine and the wind, the NEMS geographic diversity also provides some great opportunities. We we'll go to the next slide, which shows a, a chart with um, uh, energy on it. Thank you. So like our partners uh, in the GPST, the way Australians generate and consume energy is transforming at a record pace. And although you might know that Australia's generation fleet is still predominantly coal fired, the fleet is being transformed rapidly by low cost and low carbon renewable energy. What you see on the screen there is not modeling, it's not a projection and it's not hypothetical. That is the generation profile from South Australia last Sunday. And it's a dramatic picture of how the energy transition is unfolding at pace in Australia. Nearly one in every three homes in Australia has rooftop solar, totaling a quarter of our generation capacity. And during the day, power from these rooftop solar systems is displacing traditional power from thermal generators and even wind, as you can see there. On this day in South Australia, rooftop solar was able to meet a staggering 87% of underlying demand in the middle of the day. And that's not entirely unusual. When you include wind and grid scale, grid scale solar, power from renewable sources was able to meet 100% of the state's needs for over six hours. And Australia continues to install renewables at a record pace. We're installing renewables on a per capita basis at the fastest rate in the world, 10 times the world average and double the next fastest country, Germany. And we're not slowing down. With 14 gigawatts of rooftop solar installed today, we expect another nine gigawatts installed in the next four years. And the pipeline of connection projects for large scale renewables is twice the capacity of the current electricity market including a staggering 23 gigawatts of battery storage projects. And we don't have nuclear power. Our gas fleet is remarkably small at just 10% of our generation mix. And the implication of all of this is that Australia is at the cutting edge of the energy transition and our relationships with other leading system operators through the GPST will be a critical enabler for how we navigate this. Next slide, please. This chart is affectionately known as the splatter diagram. Each dot represents a 30 minute block of time throughout the year. 
And the horizontal axis is really the important one here. And it shows the proportion of renewable energy in that 30 minute window. In 2018, the peak was 38% from renewables. This year, the peak is over 60%. And because we're installing renewables so fast, our forecasts show that there will be times when renewable energy is able to supply 100% of Australia's electricity needs by 2025. And that these occasions will then become more and more frequent from 2025 onwards. So earlier this year, I set us a goal at AMO to engineer grids that are capable of running at 100% instantaneous penetration of renewable energy by 2025. And that sounds like a pretty formidable task. And I'll be honest, I don't yet know how we're going to get there. But with the support of our partners, including the GPST consortium, I am confident that we can. And parts of Australia can be a bellwether for the global energy transition as we all strive to engineer grids capable of operating at ultra high levels of renewable energy. Tasmania is connected to the mainland by a non-synchronous cable, much like Ireland is to the UK or the UK is to Europe. And with over a gigawatt of demand, Tasmania recently operated at over 91% from non-synchronous generation. And that is truly world leading. And we're learning from these experiences and we're sharing with our partners. Next slide, please. After the launch of the GPST last year, AEMO and our Australian research partner, the CSIRO, have been collaborating on a body of work that will be essential for solving some of these major challenges for the Australian energy transition. The GPST has prioritised six important research topics shown here, and we've added three more which are particularly relevant for us in Australia. They'll also have wider applications, particularly for countries with high uptakes of uh, distributed energy resources like rooftop solar. And I've got to say, I'm really excited about the forward work plan. We'll be developing an operations technology roadmap for our control rooms that can help us operate a system with greater visibility and fidelity to help us operate a grid with high levels of inverter based resources. We're actually quite well progressed in building a digital twin simulator that enables ultra high speed analysis of the grid and ability to test the strength and the stability of different configurations in near real time. And I hope that this can be a template tool for other system operators that uh, can pick this up and, uh, and choose from. There are also some other very practical things in the plan, like working with local universities to bench test inverters to build a better understanding of the performance of distributed energy resources and the impact on the broader power system. And that work will take household inverters that connect solar and batteries to the grid and put them through their paces in a lab to uh, test a range of their performance capabilities. That work will be relevant, not just for us, but for system operators around the world as we all grapple with more and more inverter-based renewables. Next slide, please. And that is a short whistle stop tour of how the energy transition is unfolding in Australia and how we're working in collaboration with partners like the GPST to create sustainable, reliable, affordable and decarbonised energy systems for the future. So back to you, Fintan. Super. Thanks very much, uh, Daniel. It's great to see uh, Daniel's commitment to uh, net or to 100% renewable system operating in 2025, something that we're uh, also committed to here in the UK. Uh, and it's great to see the, the work that's going on around the world on that. So thank you very much, uh, Daniel. So our next presentation uh, is by Anne Catherine Martin, who is from 50 Hertz. And she chairs our Research Advisory Council, and she's going to talk a little bit around what are the next frontier of challenges that the GPST is going to grapple with as it seeks to push and accelerate that agenda towards decarbonisation. So if I can hand you over to anne Catherine Martin now, please. Thank you, Thinton. Um, so, um, and thank you also for your kind introduction. And I'm very impressed also by the other speakers that already have been here in this session. Um, so starting from my from my position at 50 Hertz, so I'm responsible for the operational planning and uh, quite soon I will also be responsible for the real time operation at 50 Hertz, which is a TSO in Germany, um, which also had a 60% of renewables in last year. 
Um, and um, the spirit that also drives me and also my team is to ensure extraordinary, extraordinary high level of uh, reliability of the energy supply. But at the same time, and this was also what, what Daniel was uh, talking about, um, to include as much renewables as, as possible, up to 100%. So in the beginning of this transition um, towards a net zero system, it was su sufficient to just squeeze and optimize um, the, the system and the, and the processes that we already have. But this is no longer suitable. Um, so as we already saw in the other presentations, so a net zero system needs disruptive approaches. Um, they will be a key for, for the success of the energy transition. And um, it's not only the disruptive approaches regarding tools or methods or um, the control room requirements that we already heard about, but earlier we also heard about um, the equipment in the system that needs to be disruptive, meaning um, we will have more and more inverters connected to the system um, with a decreasing amount of conventional power plants. And, and so the, the UNIFI consortium that we heard in the beginning um, is also addressing a very, very important um, topic regarding inverters and the um, grid building performance of, of those equipment. So they do not only mimic uh, the old system that was in the past, um, but we even make use by those new approaches we even make use of the capability of those equipment, which is even more than the conventional power plants gave us. So one more point I would like to make is, um, and this is very important to notice, is that in general, there will be no this single solution that um, makes the energy transition um, going, um, but we need to have multiple approaches, multiple ways of, of going for, for a common solution. And um, it's always a set, a set of multiple ones. We had those uh, grid forming um, inverters already mentioned. We have already been mentioned um, by the previous speakers of um, AI based um, solvers and so on. But it's only two out of a whole bunch of, of solutions we will need. Um, so GPST already identified what, what is needed. Um, so we do not only need solutions that work properly in simulations, um, but we also, and that's the key, we also need fast application um, at system operators, of system operators, um, meaning the tools and also the processes. Um, but moreover, uh, we also need an improved workforce, and this was what uh, Cynthia was talking in the very beginning um, of this session, um, which includes also leaders, um, but um, which is, of course, diverse. Um, so me as, um, as a system operator or at, at, at the responsible of system operation at 50 Hertz, I need different points of view. I need different approaches to get to a solution. Um, and this also means that I need a, a diverse team in order to get there. Um, so I don't only need diverse teams to overcome the challenges that we have at 50 Hertz as a TSO, but we need it as a whole community, as a community of 100% renewables. And this is also what GPST is going for. And um, how do we do it at GPST and especially the, the research advisory uh, committee where we have webinars, where we discuss, where we inspire each other, where we can evolve ideas and solutions and in the end, even make them happen. So um, we have had um, a lot of webinars this year. We are planning a bunch of webinars next year as well. Um, we have uh, the research agenda webinar in order to discuss all the research questions that we are going for. Um, we have coordination calls with uh, institutions like SIGRE. Um, we have also IEEE in the boat. Um, and um, there will also be a workshop, uh, I mentioned already artificial intelligence, there will also be uh, a workshop on how artificial intelligence uh, can make the climate change, um, uh, well, how artificial intelligence can make um, an important point for, for, for our work against the climate change. So there's a lot of stuff um, ongoing and um, plenty of work to do. 
and I'm looking very, very forward um, as being part of GPST here. Thank you. Super, thank you very much. I mean, it's great to hear uh, some of those areas that uh, the re where the research is now starting to, to move into, such like uh, artificial intelligence, AI, and, and, and the benefits that that can potentially deliver to accelerating uh, this transition. So that was uh, the majority of our panel. We now just have some, some closing uh, remarks. So first up, we're very honored and, and privileged to have Jonathan Pershing, who's the U.S. Deputy Special Presidential Envoy on Climate, uh, come up and provide some reflections and thoughts on, on GPST and what he's heard. Jonathan, I'll pass it over to you. So thank you very much, Fintan. You know, one of the things about coming to sessions like this is to think about the, con the contrast between the negotiations that are happening next door and some of the really operational details that we're required to walk through to solve the problem. We have people like me who spend our lives thinking about what's the overarching objective? How do we think about where we are trying to go? We've got increased clarity on that. We are now in a position where we understand that the change that we are seeking is to keep global temperatures from rising more than about one and a half degrees and certainly well below two because even at those lowered levels, we see real impacts. That's very nice. But at the end of the day, we have to translate that into action. And in some ways, that's what this group is seeking to do. We've moved and we are clear that the structure is very heavily dependent on what we do in the energy sector. I had the privilege of working at the US Department of Energy in the policy office for a number of years and I can tell you the United States is deeply immersed in this problem. It's a problem, though, that is not just ours. It's a problem that spans the world. It's a problem that has to bring in all countries, not just the advanced developed countries, but all nations. We understand very clearly that we are seeking to move to really 100% carbon-free power. And we understand that the market has already made quite clear choices that renewables will be a central piece of that puzzle. In fact, what we know is that even in this last year, even during a moment where COVID was driving the global conversation, investment in renewables continued to climb and in fact reached its highest levels ever. That's a function of both price, which has declined precipitously, but also an increased understanding of our capacity to manage a variable supply in a grid which was designed for other purposes. The United States is no stranger to those other purposes, nor are our colleagues here in the UK who, if anything, could be said to have pioneered the coal-based infrastructure. But all of us are in a position to plan for that transition. And this consortium explicitly is designed to help with that transition. This is a group, and we heard in a series of presentations in the panel, we heard concrete examples for how that can occur. We heard specific changes that each country is endeavoring to make. We heard ways that cooperation is advancing the agenda. So what I'd like to do is thank you all thank the groups who've worked on this. And what I'd like really much to do is to introduce our own Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm, who I think will be able to give us some sense of some of the transitions that she is focused on. And it's really a great honor and a pleasure both to have had myself some prior history at DOE, but to know how much she has advanced this agenda for all of us while she's been here and what she's looking forward to contributing going forward. I turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, so much. Am I good? You can hear me? This weird situation. All right. Well, it is. I, I'm sorry that I missed the substance and I'm only swooping in at the very end, but um, I'm still going to talk to you if that's all right. <laughs> um, it is really, it's a pleasure to be here. I know that the Global Power Systems uh, Transformation Consortium has made a huge amount of progress uh, since April, rumor has it, uh, and, uh, and impact, of course, showing, showing that to be true. Uh, as many of you know, the impact, uh, excuse me, the 
thinking behind uh, GS, GPST is simple, that we know that the path to net zero starts with the nation's power sector, every nation's power sector. And uh, with demand for power rising globally, we have got to crack the code on making sure we do this right. We are in a race to add as much clean energy as possible. I was just on, a, on the plenary panel and they were talking about how many thousands of gigawatts of clean that we have got to, to, got to add, which is just a huge amount of work uh, on the, for the grid and for expanding the grid and making it resilient. So the good news, of course, is just uh, that as clean energy capacity is growing, uh, in fact, what was it, 45% growth uh, in 2020, uh, and that was in the face of a global pandemic. So this really, this very focused effort that all of these nations are bringing to bear means that that will only accelerate. Obviously, we've got a lot of work to do to get to 100% clean power. And, um, you know, every country is facing similar issues along the way, whether it's grid complexity, um, different um, units of government talking to one another, being able to you know, upload grid onto onto this the big system, the integration of it, the standardization, all of that is what you are working on. I know um, the Department of Energy and the Department of State obviously joined with uh, Secretary Quartang of the UK and um, several system operator CEOs to form this uh, consortium. And I know it's a first of its kind initiative and I know we're just starting and I know we'll keep you together to be able to move uh, forward because we need so much work needs to be done. And I know that you've also notched some of these impressive accomplishments. So launching state-of-the-art uh, research on grid forming inverters. That's great, that's gonna accelerate. Uh, helping Indonesia's grid operator prepare for the massive uh, variable renewable energy integration. Um, in fact, Indonesia's uh, Minister of Energy was here last night talking about the unbelievable amount and um, diverse sets of inputs that that can be added. And so all of that complexity, thank you for, for working on that. Undertaken, uh, we've all undertaken this exciting work with USAID to support gender diversity in the sector. We got more work to do on that. And of course, that's just the start. So today, I'm really thrilled um, to share the stage with some of the GPST champions who have contributed to those successes and who are gonna, who have, and uh, will, I'm sure, continue to offer their thoughts on what we've accomplished so far. You know, we are together, obviously, raising confidence that the power grids who are running on 100% clean non non-carbon um, emitting energy are not only possible, but that they're desirable and that it really offers a, a more resilient um, and sustainable energy mix. And from my point of view, I'm totally obsessed about the job creation opportunities in clean energy of all forms. Um, our consortium partners here stand ready to support, obviously, all of these countries who are seeking to decarbonize their power grids in every corner of the world. We want to bring together the world's smartest people to be able to do that. Uh, we want to help countries everywhere overcome these very large uh, challenges from what they face at home. And, and we want to demonstrate that creating jobs in clean energy is really good for their economies as well. Um, and we want to learn. We want to learn. We certainly, in America, we want, we want to learn from you all. We want to learn from other countries. We are certainly not the first uh, to this dance, um, but we also want to be sure we're on the dance floor with you. So, so that's what um, you all are all about. GPST is all about. I want to thank you so much for joining uh, today. I hope to have, um, you know, many more like-minded folks in the years ahead uh, working on making sure we've got resilient, communicative grids that really help power not just countries, but our entire world. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. All right. very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary Granholm. Uh, and, you know, we're absolutely delighted to be sharing a dance floor uh, with you as, as we go forward. So, so thank you very much for those remarks. This brings us to the conclusion of our uh, event here today. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time uh, to join us. Hopefully you saw some of the work that's going on in GPST and some of the really tangible actions that we're, that we're taking forward. Please do reach out to, to us in the consortium. Please do join with us. Uh, this is not just about uh, talking here today. 
this is not about blah, blah, blah. This is about do, do, do. And we want to get on and decarbonize uh, the system at a dramatically accelerated place. So thank you all so very much for joining. Thank you for any, everyone who joined uh, online. And thank you for persevering with us uh, through some of the, the technical difficulties. Enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.